What you'll see here is our five pass journey to get up and running with IT risk management, as well as integrated compliance. We believe that journey should be multidisciplinary. And one of the best starting points to do that is through an integrated risk register. That's what you see here with pass one. Giovanni is going to talk in a few moments about how we can accelerate that journey through content with both risk statements and control objectives. From there, once you've identified your risk foundations, we then need to apply that out to the operating environment, and that's done through the past two applicability matrix. Pass three is where we rapidly identify capabilities and identify potential gaps through assessing the overall organization through surveys, diagnostics, attestations. And then once we identify where the highest risk areas are in the organization, that's where we go through our pass four and pass five techniques where we document actual controls and then perform that evidence-based testing, if you will. So at Agile, we've developed about 25 certified built on now applications on the ServiceNow store, of which 20 are industry specific content packs that are made up of the various laws, regulations, and frameworks that organizations need to comply with. Our Agile automated regulatory compliance content has three components, which you'll see along the middle row here. And these include the ongoing monitoring of those laws, regulations, and frameworks, the complementary regulatory change management workflows to go manage the changes of those laws and regulations within ServiceNow, as well as the ability to produce audience specific reporting, even on a mandate by mandate basis. Currently, we maintain over 650 different authoritative sources in ARC, which are decomposed into these discrete topical citations that are each mapped against a succinct index of about 250 integrated requirements, which really align risk statements with related control objectives. While there's other content providers out there, what's unique about our content is that it brings the worlds of risk and compliance together, whereas others don't. So here's an example of how our content works. So if I might draw your eye to the right, many different laws, regulations, and frameworks are all saying the same thing about the user termination process, for example. So essentially what we're doing with our content is mapping what each of these different sources say about that specific topic to achieve that harmonization that Brian just spoke of, and also remove the burden of our clients having to figure this part out by going to build those control frameworks themselves. And this is the Agile IT risk management taxonomy that's behind our content. And you'll see that it has six risk categories and 26 risk topics. So those 250 integrated requirements I spoke of just a moment ago, each belong to one of the containers pictured here. And this taxonomy really helps facilitate risk roll-up reporting within ServiceNow IRM. And it's worth noting that we also have enterprise risk management as well as operational risk management taxonomies available as our clients begin to expand their programs beyond just IT risk. And this is the slide where it all starts to come together. So this is a high level dashboard that's built within ServiceNow. And this is the output of our Agile Arc content, as well as a workshop that's part of our Quick Start implementation offering. This is really an example of an executive dashboard view that CISOs can use as well as take to their board to communicate where risks lie within their organization and what activities or investments might be needed to reduce those risks because as you begin to drill into each of the six risk categories along the left, you're able to see where risk management investments are paying off versus where there's still work needed to be done from both an inherent and residual risk perspective. And this is done both qualitatively and quantitatively. We are enabling our clients through ServiceNow to help address a lot of these gaps and ultimately close them. And furthermore, as our clients continue to mature their programs, we look to help them lower reliance on manually set risk values and instead begin to pull informed risk values from things that are native to the ServiceNow platform, like control tests, indicators, incidents, and the like, to give our clients a true living and breathing risk, risk dashboard that evolves and matures with their program. In our demo, Jay will show an example of this dashboard built in ServiceNow and specifically how some of these techniques can be wired in through ServiceNow IRM. You know, next, as we start thinking about taking that a step further and automating your IT risk management journey, you know, really the, the next place to start thinking about is, you know, where else is there data on the ServiceNow platform, uh, both from a risk and security capability, but even more, more broadly across, you know, ServiceNow, and where's there some data that can be monitored 
um, through what they call indicators to continuously monitor, you know, where is there risk? Where is there change happening? Um, you know, is, is, is there um, data feeds coming in that need to be monitored? And that ultimately can also help influence, you know, understanding the risk posture of the organization and get to that continuous monitoring um, vision that everyone is looking to um, get to over time. Um, you'll see, for example, on this, we call this the honeycomb slide here, where you'll see various attributes being passed, you know, from vendor risk management into integrated risk management or from business continuity management into IRM. Same thing with SecOps. Um, you know, so this is just a great example of the interplay between, you know, additional solutions, you know, being all on platform. And the great news is that since that data is on the platform, we can monitor it and integrate it together. And quick question for you there too, Brian. <clears throat> If someone does not have a complete CMDB, how would that play here? Is that something that would have an impact or is it something you work around? That's a great question. I'll have Jay talk in a minute about some of the kind of how we, we deal with that from a, a technology implementation perspective, but I'll, I'll just leave it in that, um, you know, if I waited for every organization to get up and running with a, a CMDB that were, they were happy with, you know, we wouldn't have a, a risk and security practice and I'd be out of business. So there's some really smart techniques that can be done. To, to manage, if you will, your risk and security programs on service now, you know, while you are also on that CMDB journey.